So I've been using the iPad for my main computer over the last two years. It does everything from run my content on this channel to my freelance work and everything else in between. But you could make it better. In this video, I wanna share with you the minimal iPad setup that I've designed. It's a custom look that you can create quite easily on your iPad. I wanna show you how you can get this look and a couple of brilliant hacks that make this a brilliant portable computer from accessing files on your home screen to using shortcuts in clever ways for some serious creative productivity. It's getting really hot, hang on a sec. That's better. Well, hi everyone, this is Better Creating. My name's Simon, and if you've not been to the channel before, it's all about simplifying creative life. So I make videos about productivity, simple living, and creating better content, and being a creative or a freelancer in the world at the moment. So. This video is about my new custom minimal iPad setup, how I've created this home screen. I wanna take you through how I did that and beyond it looking rather cool like this, I wanna show you some of the sources and tricks that I've used, some of the apps and facilities, the utilities that can help you do some of this stuff. But there are a couple of really cool tips and tools that I've discovered to really make the most out of an iPad. So this is my minimal productive iPad setup, great. So this is my home screen. What I love about it is the fact that because you can remove all the titles here um, of the apps, the folders, and the shortcuts uh, using this approach, it just blends together really beautifully. Now these icons that you're seeing here are a combination of um, a really great set that I um, have discovered from Mac Stories. Um, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check those out. Um, and they just have a really beautiful kind of icon. And because I've got this black uh, background and they have black backgrounds, they blend beautifully and you lose that kind of app shape around them. I've also got um, a pack off Reddit and there are some amazing developers actually offering sets of icons like these for free. If I just go into my files and show you. So this one is uh, called Knox, for example. There you go, so there's a ton of them there, look at that. So you'll see, the other thing that I've done here is, is I've got this kind of this kind of blended calendar view. Now what I'm using for that is um, Widget Smith. So if I click onto that, it actually takes me into the Widget Smith um, uh, kind of home screen. It's a really cool, simple app. If you've not heard of it, check it out. It allows you to create a lot of different um, widgets. So I could go in here, for example, click on this, and there are a ton of different options that you can use. What I'm really enjoying using are these simple black widgets. Um, I can link it up to the calendar that I'm using, name it, save it, and then you simply add it by holding down on the widget thing, adding a new one, searching for widget smith, and you can add different types. So I can then put it in and affect it. These widgets here are uh, Notion. Um, Notion offers really cool widget integration. I particularly like it that you can just pick a specific page. So it gives me access to my wider Notion system. I can go straight to my notebooks or whatever else I want it to be. In this case, it's my content creation dashboard and my notebook page. Right, let me take you through the process of how I've installed this. There are two ways to do it. The first one is the shortcuts. So what we're gonna do is go into the shortcuts um, folder and you'll see all of the shortcuts that I've created previously here. What we're gonna do is create a new one. So let's just click on the plus button. Um, you're gonna go to scripting and open app and then you're gonna choose uh, the app you wanna do. Let's say we want to do Canva, which I use for editing images. I'm doing the thumbnail for this, in fact. Uh, so we've added that, so there's the app it's gonna open. Then I'm gonna click on these little dots here uh, and you name it, I'm gonna call it Canva. And you should name it here because then you know what the shortcut is. Uh, when you add it to the home screen, it will look different. I'm gonna click on add to home screen. I'm gonna clear it because I don't want titles on it. So you just leave that blank. Then you can click here on the home screen button and you can either choose from photos or you can go to files. I'm gonna to go to files. This is the Mac story packs. And then we just find an appropriate uh, image for Canva. I'm able to do this both for kind of shortcut functions and opening apps. You can see there's no difference. I'm gonna use this, it's a kind of nice editing thing. So we're gonna click on that, add it to the home screen. Of course, I could use a Canva icon if I wanted to. Click done. 
I can drag it into position and there is my Canva link. Brilliant. This is the simple way of doing shortcuts um, links. Uh, it means that um, I don't delete all the originals. So what you could do is just drop them down into here, for example, somewhere like this, where you just keep them all out of the way in one folder. And then you keep this nice clear view of the links that you want. Um, and it still means that you can search for everything using the search function. That's one option. Now, of course, um, a lot of you might be aware that we get a pop up. Uh, so let me give an example. If I open something, you'll get this little pop up at the top. Well, the great news is I can show you exactly how to suppress that shortcut pop up in my other video on my minimal iPhone setup. Go check out the tutorial and I'll show you how to do it. But first, here's another solution. And that is using something called Icon Board. This is an amazing app where you can do everything in one go before you place it onto the screen. Now you've got my screens. So this here is how I created all of those you can have multiple screens and what's really cool is you can install and keep different looks so if you wanted to create a load of different looks you could do it in here in my screens and then pick whichever one you want to do um, so let's click on this so what you would do here is essentially go through and add uh, different icons let me show you how I do one uh, from uh, using an image from a file so I'm going to pick on here uh, I'm going to actually show you the Knox ones that I was using so we're going to click on App Store it says it's done. Now if I go down to the bottom, there it is. I'm going to click on it uh, and it actually automatically is opening App Store. If it doesn't do that and it just says icon board, you'd go in here and you'd pick. If it's a system app, you click here. If it's anything else, you click here. So for the system app, I'm going to click on this and you find App Store. Click on it. Done. Once you've added all of your icons, you can then, you can export it. There's two ways to install your icons using uh, this, uh, the version I just showed you using shortcuts. So we can go install with shortcuts and what will happen is it'll export them all and ask you to save them to camera roll. So because you can use icon board to create things, you're going to use the same process I just talked you through. Uh, the other option though, which is really cool is to install with a profile. You have a button here if you don't want there to be any names. So this is the quick way to do it so that you don't have to delete any of the names. You just click that so it's on and there'll be no titles on any of these. I click on install with profile, allow. It's now in my settings app if I want to install it. So I then go back out, go to settings and here you'll see profile downloaded. There it is, you click install, put in your passcode and it will install it so that all of those apps icons that you've created will drop onto your home screen and from there you can basically rearrange it. Also what's great particularly for external apps with a profile there won't be any pop-ups. Apparently in iOS 14.5 we're going to have some problems uh, with using the profile method. So I'm using the one uh, that I showed you first. Do check out the other video on my minimal iPhone setup that will show you exactly how to block those pop-ups. I'll pop a link above and down below. What I love about using icons like this, um, particularly the Mac Story set, is that they can blend both shortcuts, which is this one here, and normal app like links, which is this one here. So for example, I've got my calendar um, shortcut to add a new entry, but I've also got access to my calendar. So you can put both of these here. And this uh, adding this calendar um, works in a very similar way. It's just that you're creating a specific shortcut. Let me show you what I mean. So in here, if I go now back to my shortcuts, so a new calendar event down here, if I click on that, so this is just to add a title uh, from today at midday to tomorrow at 1 p.m. in the calendar. So if you're new to shortcuts, I would check out kind of things like starter shortcuts, or go to gallery and search for things you want to be able to do. For example, it might be new note. And of course, what you can also do is um, download other people's shortcuts, which will solve the problem for you. Now, if you want to install uh, something like this, a direct folder link to a spec specified folder in your system, this one takes me directly to current documents in my iCloud, uh, there is a way to do that. A very cool shortcut that's built by Mac Stories and they've used something called Scriptable, uh, which is um, a kind of utility app 
that allows you to do much more than what the basic shortcuts um, allow you to do. Here's how to get these folders on your own home screen. First of all, check out the link below to the FS Bookmarks shortcut by Mac Stories. So when you first turn this on, it will give you a screen to install um, some scripts in Scriptable. You just follow the instructions, it allows you to do it. Um, it happens in Scriptable and then you get to this stage. I'm gonna click create a new folder and it says what you need to do. Um, tap OK, go to Scriptable, it's giving me the instructions. So it will send me to Scriptable. Um, I go to Scripts, I click the Settings, I go to File Bookmarks, those are the two I've already created. I'm gonna create a new one. I'm gonna pick a folder. I'm gonna make it Live Projects because I use that a lot. Choose the name, save it. Now once it's saved in there, I go back to the Shortcuts app. I run the um, bookmark thing again and click on Get an Existing One. I find the folder and I type it in. It's saved this to the clipboard. So now I add a new shortcut um, and I'm gonna search in here URL, open a URL, click in URL, and we're going to paste in the link. And then we do what we did in the previous thing to um, add it to a home screen. I decided to mark up simply one of the existing icons in photos and make it custom. Straight into my large projects file. I don't know how they made it, but it's absolutely brilliant. So go and check it out and turn your uh, desktop into a desktop. But if you've got folders, this is all very clear, but if we want to get rid of uh, this uh, kind of social label here, there's a really simple way to do that. I'm going to go into Safari and I'm going to I'm going to search for blank Unicode character. Click on that uh, and you'll see compart.com is a good example. Uh, click on it. There it is. That's the blank Unicode character. Very hard to say. I'm going to hold on that. I'm going to copy it. So I can just paste that in. No titles on your folders. If you enjoyed the video, you found it valuable, hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. Particularly, consider subscribing if you're not already and see my videos pop up in your feed more. Let me know in the comments below how it goes, anything else you wanna see on the channel. Yeah, there you go. Get outside, enjoy the fresh air. I'll see you for more productivity and creativity in the next video. Bye.